proteins. Proteins are large biological molecules consisting of one or more chains of amino acids. which are known as polypeptides. So a polypeptide is an amino acid chain, not just an amino acid, but the whole chain of them connected. Now proteins have different structures based on how many of them are present. So the primary structure of a protein is its amino acid sequence. So just the one chain the one polypeptide chain and what sequence those amino acids are taking. The secondary structure is the regularly repeating local structures stabilized by hydrogen bonds. Now this is whenever we've got a few proteins interacting together and the local structures or the regular um, structures that these proteins will form just all on their own without any help. And some examples would be the alpha helix, beta sheet, and turns. So those are just some different shapes that the proteins can take whenever there are a few of them joining together with hydrogen bonds. Now the tertiary structure is getting more complex. It's the overall shape of a single protein molecule. So enough proteins have joined together to make a whole molecule and the tertiary structure is referring to the spatial relationship of secondary structures to one another. So you've got your alpha helices, your beta sheets, and your turns, and it's how they interact together and what kind of shape they all form whenever they form into a single molecule. And you've got proteins joining together and then more proteins with hydrogen bonds joining together into a larger molecule and what that molecule looks like spatially. The quaternary structure is going to be the structure formed by several protein molecules. So you can see how we just keep adding proteins here to get different structures. And the more that are added, the more different that these um, structures are going to look because they're getting more complex. So several protein molecules are joined together in the quaternary structure, and this is usually called a protein subunit. So it's no longer one molecule, it's multiple molecules, so it's a subunit which functions as a protein complex. So it's going to be more complex, it's going to be able to process more complex functions. And a lot of the time what you're going to see is the quaternary structure of a protein because you have lots of them together and they are drawn toward each other and then they bond. Now let's look at some of the functions of proteins. We have structural proteins. And these give stiffness and rigidity to biological components that would otherwise be more fluid. They wouldn't have a lot of shape to them. An example is keratin. Keratin is a protein found in our hair, nails, um, in birds' feathers, and in animals' hooves. And it gives them a hardness that they wouldn't otherwise have. It's not a part of your body like your skin or an organ. And you can feel they're a lot harder than your skin would be. Um, like your nail and your hair don't feel the same as your skin feels or as your internal organs would feel and that's because they have this protein present that gives them more rigidity. So structural proteins are going to make things stiffer and give them a harder shape. Next we have enzymes and enzymes catalyze chemical reactions. So there's a chemical reaction that needs to take place, but it won't be able to take place until this enzyme is present. When the enzyme is present, it catalyzes the chemical reaction and speeds it up and lets it occur. Next, you've got receptors. Proteins that function as receptors bind a signaling molecule to induce a biochemical response. So it receives that signaling molecule and then it binds it somewhere that will induce the biochemical response that needs to happen. Next you have antibodies which are also known as immunoglobulins 
and these bind antigens and target them for destruction. So an antigen is a foreign body that comes into the cell and it's not welcome, it's seen as the threat, and so these antibodies or immunoglobulins are part of the immune system. And they bind to the antigens or that foreign body and they target them for destruction so that then they are destroyed and removed from the cell and the threat is eliminated. We also have motor proteins. And motor proteins generate the forces responsible for muscle contraction. So think about your motor functions, being able to move your muscles, being able to move around. All of those are, um, are able to happen because of these proteins, these motor proteins. So if you're able to move your arm back and forth, if you're able to close and open your hand, those are responsible, uh, those are happening because of muscle contractions and those muscle contractions are generated by motor proteins. If we didn't have those, we wouldn't be able to contract our muscles like we are. Next we have pump proteins. So these are proteins that act as a kind of pump and they transport ions or small molecules across a membrane. So you've got a cell membrane or an intercellular membrane and the po proteins can act as a pump and push these small ions or molecules across the membrane and that is their primary function as a pump protein is just to transport these small molecules or ions across the membrane. Lastly we've got switch proteins and these act as an on-off switch based on the presence or absence of certain other molecules in the cell. So if a cell was waiting for a certain molecule to be present to do something, then the switch protein is going to act as an off switch and keep the cell from performing that function until the certain molecule it's waiting on is present. Once it's present, it flips the switch and says basically it's on. It can perform this function now. So it acts as a, like an on off switch for the cell. As you can see, Proteins are very important in a cell. They actually can make up a large percentage of the components of a cell. For instance, you could have a cell that was made up of maybe 3% DNA, which is really important. You have to have the DNA encoded correctly for everything else in the cell to function. But the protein could make up almost 50% of that cell's components. So while it isn't maybe as biologically important as that DNA is, it makes up a big part of that cell and not much would be going on if it didn't have protein there as well because protein has a lot of functions. So you can see that proteins are very important for cell life and lots and lots of cell functions.